Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week, we'll talk about dealing with patterns or hatches that don't want to play nice. This is in all versions of Revit, so let's take a look. I'll go back to Revit here. So here we are. Um, in this plan, you'll notice that we got this certain flow pattern, and it's going in a horizontal uh, direction. And one of the nice things about flow patterns, if you want, you actually have the ability to align them. So we'll go to, let's say, Modify, Align. I grab, let's say, the edge of an element, and then I pick this, and you'll see how Revit aligns it, and that's great. Uh, you can do it in most situations. I'm going to hit undo on that. All right, let's go ahead and get out the command, and we'll hit undo. All right, now, uh, we'll take a look at this pattern out on the port chair, this little area. You'll see we get the patch in it, the hatch is at an angle. Now, I'll try again to hit the align command. I'll say align with this one, and I pick this one. You'll notice nothing happens. Uh, so it's starting to be ornery, and it doesn't want to play nice. So how can we make this happen? Well, or what is actually causing it to happen? Well, when you when you slope a slab using the modify sub elements, sometimes it'll cause the pattern to go awry. So let's just check and see what's going on here. Modify sub elements, and I'll pick on this guy here, and you'll see it's at seven eighths. And we come over here, this one's at uh, about seven eighths. Now, if I reset the shape, you'll notice that the pattern jumps back to normal. So the problem seems to be in this modify sub element. Uh, um, scenario here. So how can we go about making this slab slope and uh, making the hatch pattern correct? So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we'll cut a section through here. Alright, there we go. We'll go take a look at it in section. Now um, what we did was, you'll see this on level 3 here. The slab is actually at a slight angle. Uh, that's what may be causing the hatch pattern to go awry. So a couple of ways to work around it. Uh, we do want it to look like this. Let's change the uh, scale here. Okay, so when we do, when we do our section, we want to see that slope. So uh, making the slab flat eh, is not an option. So let's go back and look at some options here. Uh, the first one is we'll actually just put another pattern right over it. Uh, this will take care of it in plan view, and, uh, and that'll work out fine. But if we do something in 3D, it won't work. So this is probably the easiest we'll do first, and then we'll come back and actually... Uh, adjust the slab itself. So both ways work up to you on which one uh, is easier or more efficient. So the first one, we're actually just going to go to annotate and we're actually going to put a filled region right on top of it. So put the fill, five to fill region button. Okay, at this point I'm going to start uh, my pick lines and I'll walk around and just pick it. Now I'm not going to worry so much about trimming around it, I just want you to see the um, see it actually in happening, so I'll just fill it that out. And there was a little brick ledge there, we're just going to skip over that. Okay, at this point, you'll see it says diagonal crosshatch. When I hit finish, you'll see it fills with that pattern on top of it. Now, it's hiding the brick pattern underneath, but you'll notice here, first of all, that pattern is not correct. So we'll actually create our pa another pattern real quick. Uh, I'm going to hit edit type, and we'll come down here and we'll pick, let's say, a pattern. Um, okay, so that's the floor system. Let's go over and maybe have to do a tab over it to make sure we pick the right piece. All right, or we can use a uh, crossing here. Now, when I use the crossing, you'll see it says uh, detail item. If you're selecting a single item, here's a good little trick. Some people use filters, but here's another way. Just hit detail item. See, it's only picking up that single detail item. They all stay highlighted, but it's only picking up the detail item, which is the hatch pattern. I'll hit uh, edit type. We will duplicate it, and I'm going to call this, let's say, uh, brick hatch, Okay, just so we know what it is. Um, that's our own. Now, at this time, we're going to go from a fill pattern from drafting, and we'll change it to uh, model. And we're actually going to scroll down and pick a brick pattern. Brick. Okay. Hit OK on that. Uh, hit OK. And now you'll see that the brick pattern is right there. So we can put that in. We can align it. We can rotate it. We can do whatever we need to do to make that happen. So it shouldn't be uh, an issue. But here's where the problem comes in. We go to 3D. Uh, you'll notice that that pattern is still twisted. So let's look at uh, another way that will take care of it for once and for all. Back in level 3, what I'm going to do is now uh, get rid of that pattern. We'll just delete it. I'll hit the delete key. It goes away. So that was one way as a quick fix if you couldn't get it to work. Now, uh, what we'll do is we're actually going to go back to reset the shape. When I reset the shape, notice that the actual um, material jumps back to where it was. So the suspect is when I go up top, I grab this uh, this floor or slab again, modify sub elements. When I grab this and I type in, let's say, negative 7 eighths inch. Okay, you'll see that at that point the hatch pattern rotates. So we're going to try to work around this scenario. Instead of using these little tools, which actually are, are quite nice, we're going to use uh, another tool to actually slope the slab. So hit escape a couple times out of that. Again, I'll select the slab. 
This time I'm going to go back to Edit Boundary. See the purple line fires up. Okay. Now uh, we we have a thing in here called Slope Arrow. Let's hit Escape out of this. Get out of it. Okay. Now verify that there's a. We're going to grab this slope. Okay. Now let's see what's actually happened there. We hit Reset Shape. Okay. So now this the shape has been reset. Now I'm actually going to hit Undo on that because I'm kind of curious um, what happened there. Hit Undo. Okay. Now uh, let's go check what this corner is. We hit the modify sub element and we grab it. Okay, it's at zero. That's why. All right, let's hit undo a couple times. I thought it actually went back. So now we've got it where it was before. Reset shape, edit boundary. Now I'm back to the purple line. When we reset the shape, it set all the corners back to zero. We're going to use a different tool here. We're going to use uh, slope arrow. Now I'm hit slope arrow. I'm going to pick approximately in the middle here, and I'm going to drag it on over to here. Now the slope arrow is a little bit different way of sloping, it, but you get about the same result. At this point, once I've drawn a slope arrow, I'm going to pick on a slope arrow, and you'll see it says height at tail versus height at head. So now it says height at level at tail. Now it's over here. I'm going to set that to zero. All right. Height offset at head over here. I'm going to set that to negative 7 eighths inch. That's what uh, it was prior. 7 eighths inch. Okay, now hit enter. What that does is this is now going to drive the, sl uh, the actual slope. Let's hit finish. Okay, you'll notice that the pattern looks correct now, but you're thinking, well, psh, that slope's probably not correct. Let's go back and click on our arrow and notice how that slab is sloped. So, but just by just using a different slope tool, uh, we ended up with, uh, with the correct result. I'm going to go back to 3D. You'll notice that the pattern is correct now. So uh, there you go. That is the tip of the week um, from CAD Tech Seminars. If you have any questions about our company, our training, our implementation, feel free to check us out on the web at freerevittraining.com or easier one, therevitguide.com. Thank you.